Okay, again, information systems you've heard me talking about it a bunch of times. Um, and I think um, a couple of you also asked, okay, when you're talking about information systems now, what's the difference between information systems and information technology? Um, and why are you talking about it in the first place? Well, um, it's rather important, especially for organizations. And there's an important distinction between information technology and information systems. And that has to be, has to do with the um, surrounding aspects of information technology. Um, because information technology in an organization is not only about a technology, it's about everything surrounding the technology. Uh, and the same goes for an innovation organization. You can just not implement an innovation or tell to your employees, okay, we're going to innovate and we're going to have a new, um, a new system in place or develop a new product. It has to be um, situated in an organization. That's why you do the second part of the business plan. You're thinking about, okay, we have an innovation now. How can we best manage the innovation in the organization? And the same is for technology. Um, and basically, an information system is the technology combined with every other aspect you have to take into account. Um, so that's what we were talking about today. So in the first four lectures, we discussed innovation. In the three lectures afterwards, we discussed several aspects of the organization. Um, and now we're going to focus on um, the more technical aspects uh, of, um, of an organization and innovation. Um, so we start with the information systems. Next week, we do databases. And we have a couple of other lectures. Let me see if I can help the uh, sound issues. Hello. Would this be better now? Or is it still? Ah, okay, great. Okay. I switched to another microphone. Okay, sorry about that. So I hope you can hear me. Uh, so I hope you uh, <laughs> at least heard what I had said before um, with a bit of noise. Um, so basically, we're going to be talking about the information systems. Well, why? Um, well, we're going to do this. We're going to talk about data, information, and knowledge. I think it's useful to know what the difference is before we talk about information technology. Then we'll talk about information systems and information technology. Um, and finally, we'll be, I'll be talking about the two most important information systems in our organization, which is well, uh, ERP and CRM. I will explain what these abbreviations mean later on. But first, before we start, let me explain a bit about what is data, what is information, what is knowledge. It's useful to know the difference. I think. Well, we'll start with data. Data is just what a computer, what you can enter in the database and what a computer can handle. A computer can handle data and then reorder data and do whatever it, you want with data. Um, and data is just a collection of non-random symbols, numbers, words, images, sounds, whatever, which you can store somewhere. You can write it down, store it on a computer or whatever. Um, data represent facts. Um, they are recorded by observation or research. Um, doesn't have to be scientific research, but if you observe the weather and write down in your diary nice weather, that's also an observation. Um, and data is not yet organized to convey specific meaning. So data is just random or well non-random numbers but without any meaning attached to it so for example the number on the slide is one eight one one two one two five oh um and that can be anything so that's data you know it can be uh, my bank account number it can be uh, the amount i have on my bank account probably in venezuelan uh, currency um but it can be anything, and that's data. Data has no meaning. And data is the only thing a computer can handle. Oh. Data becomes information when you connect data to other data. 
So for example, when you have this number and I say bank account, so the word bank account in itself is data, but when I say these two um, data points together, then suddenly you know oh, this is someone's bank account number um, or someone's phone number. So data related to other data, and the other data can be in your head, um, is information. Um, that basically means the computer does not know what data you store. A computer knows numbers, um, and you can give a computer the instruction that this number is a telephone number, but the word telephone number for a computer is still data. A computer does not know what a telephone number is. Um, only we know what it is, and we can instruct the computer to do things with that data and to relate it to each other. But information thus is if we relate data to other data. So we process the data and, and make the data meaningful and useful to us as humans. So information is data related to other data. It's processed, we have to process it, so our computer can process it as well. It's contextually relevant, so we it's contextual because well, we can relate to each other and we can know ah, it's a bank account number. I need to know that now or not. Um, and it's meaningful to us. So that's information. Well, knowledge, knowledge and information are usually very much intertwined, um, but there is actually a difference. Um, because knowledge is when you relate information to other information and to your own experience and to, um, uh, and to your own judgment. And only then becomes information knowledge. You know, I can I can explain things to you. I can give you a bunch of numbers, and I can give you a bunch of slides with or with figures and other information. Um, but it only becomes knowledge um, when you can actually do something with it. When you understand, ah, okay, I I need to understand what an information system is because uh, I need that for my work later on. Um, and that's knowledge. So knowledge is when you process information and do something with that information. So if data is raw, analyzed facts, pictures, and events, then you transform the data um, um, by processing it yourself or by letting a computer do it, then it suddenly is information, it has meaning for you. And then if you combine that with other information, with your prior experiences, etc., then it becomes knowledge. Um, and a computer can only handle data. An information system tries to make uh, or reorder and restructure the data in such a way that we derive information from it. Uh, and from that, we can build knowledge and actually make corporate decisions. So we, we um, so based on knowledge, combining data with other data, we actually make strategic decisions for the organization. So for your innovation, so you search what kinds of innovations are out there, um, you combine it with information. Other information is something like that already happened, would customers like this, and then it becomes knowledge and it becomes useful. So there's an example. So this is a figure. Um, this is about the uh, global average temperature rise uh, compared to uh, I don't know, the 1980 level, I, I think. Um, but if I don't say that to you, this is just a figure with no meaning. It's data. So if I say global temperature is rising faster than ever before, then you suddenly know what this figure is about. Then you know, ah, this is probably something to do with climate change. Um, so that becomes information. But still, so what? Global temperatures rising faster than ever before. Uh, who cares? Whatever. Um, it's not knowledge yet. Um, only if we combine it with other information um, and our own experience. So if you combine it with other research, so it's probably it's most likely human influence, um, global temperatures due to uh, most likely due to a greenhouse effect. Uh, it may have severe consequences for um, humanity in the future then suddenly it becomes knowledge. And only then we can do something with it. Only then we can say, okay, maybe we should do something about it. And then we start measuring uh, again, and then we get new data points. Um, 
becomes new information, becomes new knowledge, etc. So a never ending circle. Um, that's how the scientific process works, but that's also how it works in an organization. Um, so you have some data points, um, it results in information, uh, you combine it with you know, the strategy of the organization and other research, etc. Then you make strategic decisions um, about what your organization should do. That results in new data, etc. So a continuous cycle as well for organizations. So that's the difference between data, information, and knowledge. Um, and important to realize is that computers and information technology and all kinds of systems and organizations, they only store data and they present it to you in a way such that it is information. But then you have to do something with it yourself in order for it to be knowledge. Okay. Well, that's a short explanation about information systems and IT, uh, about data information and knowledge. I'm pretty useful to understand the next part. So information systems and information technology. So again, I've talked uh, about this for, uh, um, uh, for a while, um, um, about the difference. But let's first focus on information technology. Um, you know, information technology is basically everywhere. So everything you use, what we use right now, Zoom to do the lecture, even, you, even if you would have an offline lecture, you would have all have your laptops with you and you would use WhatsApp uh, while um, uh, attending the lecture. Um, it's all information technology. Um, and well, if you think about the, the number of times you use an information technology, um, a uh, day is really, you know, it's huge. It's not only your mobile phone, you know, it's also your washing machine and your dishwasher, you know, it also is partly information technology. So it, it gives you feedback with, with LEDs and a, an on screen and, and you give it instructions and then it does a washing cycle. So it's also informa partly information technology. So the email emails you send, the WhatsApp you send, the TikTok dances you do, it's all um, um, made possible by, um, innovations in information technology. However, information technology is not, um, information technology is um, not important on its own. And information technology is um, very difficult to manage in organizations. And when you think about the use of information technology in, in organizations, and when you think about when you heard about organizations using information technology in the news, it's mostly because of information technology failures. So if in the Netherlands we have, um, I think, a huge debate about um, information technologies in the tech services uh, and social security um, with huge projects gone awry with, with resulting in like, I think a billion um, euros in expenditure lost um, due to failures in IT, due to systems ju just not getting in place. Um, and we hear that a lot from uh, governmental organizations uh, that, that, that uh, innovations in information technology fail. fail. Um, and that's not, not because governmental organizations fail a lot. Um, it's just that governmental organizations are required to make um, those things public. Um, I can guarantee you that things go wrong just as often in commercial organizations. We just never hear about it. Um, so information technology is everywhere, but it's also pretty difficult to manage, you know, with uh, just consider all the technical issues you encounter on a daily basis with information technology and multiply that by a million, and then you have what larger organizations have. Um, so there are a bunch of examples here on the slide about um, information technology failures at the tax department, but also some uh, um, English examples about US customs, Veterans Affairs, so, and even uh, two examples of uh, commercial organizations who failed in IT implica uh, implementation. Well, the interesting thing is, let's hope that this works. Probably take forever. So, yeah, there it is, almost. Well, 
if you look online at, at large IT consultancy agencies, and if you um, uh, um, then search for, okay, why do implement, implementations fail? And of course, um, organizations like IBM, they not only sell technology, but they also manage uh, technology. So you can hire them as management consultants to uh, improve uh, your information systems or IT in your organization. Um, similar as Gartner and uh, Deloitte, a lot of other uh, organizations who, um, uh, who do um, uh, IT consultancy as part of the business. Um, and basically all of them have kind of a list of, okay, why do IT, IT projects fail? Um, and there are a lot of reasons why IT projects fail. Um, and again, the same goes for innovation projects. Um, but if you look at the main reasons, it's, it's almost never the technology. It's almost never technological aspects in hardware, software, and networks that fail. It's so, for example, this is IBM and they say it's poor planning and direction, uh, it's insufficient communication, ineffective management, failure to align with stakeholders, um, ineffective involvement of management, lack of soft skills, missing methodology. Well, that's it. Now, none of these reasons is technology related. Um, and that's because it's almost hard, it's hardly ever the technology that fails. Um, it's the mix between the technology and the organization. Um, and that's exactly the reason why we had four lectures about innovation and then had three lectures about um, organizational aspects, you know, about strategy, people, and structure and culture. Um, because innovation and IT projects only can be a success when you take into account the interplay between um, um, innovation technology on the one hand and organization on the other hand. So, and if you look at some uh, some estimates of uh, how much is cost, so this is from a, uh, a Dutch study for I think three years ago, um, and they invest. They asked a bunch of people, so how much of your work time do you spend solving IT related problems? And they said it's seven point six percent of my work time. Well, if you average that over everyone who works with computers in their work, um, it results in a loss of nine point three billion euros in non productive hours in the Netherlands alone. Um, that's not entirely true because you know if people largely overestimate the time they spend solving computer problems, but still, it kind of says that it's it's an issue. So information technology is important, it often fails, it often does not work as planned, but why should we care um, as communication and information scientists students? So we are not involved with computer technology, we are not computer scientists, um, we are social scientists. But we are social scientists who study communication and information processes in, organ in and outside organizations. Um, and information technology, the only thing that information technology does is, is make sure that information can flow from one person or one department to another. Um, so for us, it's important to know a bit about information technology, but mostly for us, it's important to know, okay, how can we manage information? And that's why information technology is important, but that's also why information technology is not important at all for us. So information technology is important, so it's because it's everywhere. Um, organization, I think large organizations such as our university, they have hundreds, maybe thousands of different information technologies and information systems in place. Um, and, and they all, some are more necessary than others, um, but they all play a part in the organization. And IT is basically everywhere, and you don't even realize you're using information technology. You know, when you use your phone, it's it's built upon information technology and upon a lot of technology, other technologies, but you don't really realize that it's there. Um, so it's ubiquitous, it's everywhere. Um, on the other hand, we, and not only we as communication information uh, science students, but basically everyone 
we should not be bothered in reaching our goal because of IT. IT should just work um, and we should be able to use it. However, that will be only the case if IT is implemented in the correct way. So if it's implemented to optimize communication and information process and not as a tool on its own. And that's where we come in because it's not only about information technology, it's not only about technological innovations, it's also about the organization, the people, the processes, the uh, et cetera. And all that together, that's an information system. So this is an example of an OVA uh, chip card using your mobile phone uh, on, the, on the image. Um, and that's not only technology, that's a lot of processes and people involved. That's a lot of thinking about, okay, how can we implement this in a way that people can actually use it? So um, in implementing this system, they probably thought of the technology acceptance model of last week. Okay, how can we make this in such a way that it's easy to understand, that people perceive it as useful, that it's easy to use, and what kind of sub-factors contribute to that? Um, but also, how do we implement that into the into um, our organization and um, for the OVA chip card, it's how do we implement this across organizations because it's for all public transport or transport organizations in the Netherlands. So um, a chip for public transport like this is, so well, it's of course a technological innovation, but it's just as much an organizational innovation and a people innovation and a process innovation because you have to take everything into account to make it work okay so then we get to an information system i just lost my mouse again. So now we get to an information uh, system. Well, so we can now define an information system. An information system thus is a um, group of interrelated components officially that work together collectively to carry out input processing, output and storage action, storage and control actions in order to convert data into information. It's a very technological definition, but it basically means Okay, um, we have a group of components that work together and the group of components is not necessarily technology, but it's also people and processes and procedures. And we combine them in such a way so that information goes into it. Um, it's kind of it's processed and it, it goes out again to another department or another person um, so that we can do something with that data in the system that we can convert it into information. Um, so basically an information system is doing something, it takes some input, um, then we process the information and then we output it again. Um, I think the interesting part about this definition of an information system is that it doesn't involve technology at all. Um, and that's because technology isn't necessarily part of an information system. Now, I am an information system right now. Um, even without Zoom and, and my computer. So basically my whole job consists of um, gathering input from multiple sources, then processing that, and then outputting it to you in a way that makes it easier to understand and more manageable for you, um, in, in which I uh, exceedingly fail. Uh, but at least I um, it's a, I present it a bit simpler than simply, you know, giving you like a 15 books and saying good luck. Um, so I take that as input, I process it and I output that. Um, so, so you can basically think of every information system um, as something that could be done without technology at all. So I could teach this, this lecture um, to you without the use of technology. So I could visit you 
uh, one by one and present them at a safe distance uh, the lecture to you. And you could make um, you could make notes on pen and paper, although that's a technology as well. Uh, but you could also remember it. Um, and then I could do the same for the exam. So we could do this without technology at all. Um, only that would be very, 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 very inefficient. Um, so basically, the only role that technology, that information technology plays in an information system is making the information that goes in, that is processed and that goes out of the system more, um, makes it flow more efficiently, more effective and possibly more accurate by you know, controlling or checking errors. Um, so, Let's get back to the organizations and, if you, and to your specific innovation and business plan. Um, when you think of your business plan and when you think of your innovation and the organization surrounding the innovation, um, you, you need information in your organization in order to make the innovation happen. Okay? You, you need to have information from a production department about manufacturing. You need information about customers. Um, if a customer order something on a website, uh, you need to know that they ordered something. So you need a bunch of information in your organization. Um, and you could solve that in multiple ways. Uh, again, you could do that without technology at all, only you probably need some technology to make it happen. You, know, you need a website, you need um, so that the customers can order something, which means you need to kind of a database and a system in which those orders are entered. Um, then you probably need kind of a system so that the financial department and other departments can see who ordered what. Um, so um, in your business plan, you need to think about, okay, what kind of information do we need in our organization? And then you need to think, okay, what kind of technology could we need for, for this? Do we need a database? Do we need a website? Do we need um, a, a, a a financial system to make the uh, to to uh, to build the customer, etc. And then you think about technologies that can help you in processing information. So um, I think I'm rambling a bit, but it basically boils down to the information system is um, uh, considering all the information that flows through your organization. Um, and then thinking about, okay, how do they work together in order to make it happen? And information technology is the, is, is the technology that makes all the information flows happen more efficiently, effective, and accurate than without technology or than with, um, you know, previous versions of the technology. I hope that's somewhat clear, but I have a couple of more examples later on. So, sorry, yeah, my, uh, my mouse and my, my wireless mouse and keyboard just uh, stopped working. So I had to use my laptop right now. Oh, let's see if I can solve it. There it is. Okay, sorry, sorry about that. So uh, because I, I couldn't change lights um, uh, because my mouse stopped working. Um, so again, this is an information system. So if you look at it from a more um, a technical perspective, um, there are actually and, and from a combination of uh, technology and people and processes, it basically has five components. Um, so you have the hardware and the software, which is the information technology part of an information system. Um, then you have the data, which finally turns out to be the information uh, in the information system or the information that comes out of the information system. Um, and then you have the human side of the information system, which is procedures and people. So these are all the processes and people that work with the information system. 
And those are the five components of an information system uh, combined uh, with information technology. But it's basically similar to the previous slides. You know, it's, it's, it's again, a group of interrelated components that process data. Only here you see that the technology parts already baked into it. Why is this important? I'll show that to you in a couple of slides. So what is the information technology in an information system? Um, well, again, you don't necessarily need information technology, but usually when we talk about information systems, we talk about the combination of technology and the organization and the people and processes, etc. So what is the IT part? Well, the information technology part is the hardware, the software, um, the network systems or the, the telecommunication systems that actually send information from one person or one system to another, um, and the database systems that store the data in the information system. So, that's, so those are the four technology components of um, an information system. And in the online, uh, uh, sorry, in the online supplement after this lecture, I will talk about hardware, software, and telecommunication networks. And next week, we will talk about databases. Um, but a technology part is also the methods, standards, and procedures for using this technology. So it's it's training um, to use the technology. It's 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 the formal process that you have to enter this in the system once you have done something else, etc. So that's also part of the formal uh, all the formal procedures surrounding uh, information technology, and also you know the data that is stored in those database systems is also part of the IT. So what's the difference between information systems and information technology? IT is technology, information systems is more than technology. So for example, if I would think about public transportation, um, the same way as I think of an information system in an organization, um, the information technology of public transportation would be vehicles, the gas, the, the, the roads, um, Etc. So basically, everything, every hardware aspect related stuff related to public transport. Only that's not what we consider public transport. So we consider public transport a bus showing up on time, um, us being able to enter the bus, us paying the fare. Um, so public transport is more than just a vehicle and gas. Similar communication is more than the symbols we use to communicate. And the university is more than a lecture hall, the syllabi, and a Zoom account. Um, so I think those are actually pretty good metaphors for the difference between information systems and information technology. So an information system is more because it's um, because it combines technology with an understanding of the organization. That also means that if you want to implement technology in your organization, and then we get back to innovation, if you want to innovate in an organization, you have to do the same because the innovation can be seen as the technology part. Well, not really because that would be invention, but, um, but you have to take into account the whole rest of the organization in order for your innovation to be a success. Um, because else you just have the technology that can be done. You just have an invention. So you have to take into account um, the strategy, the people, the process, the customers, of everything. Um, so basically, that's why you say you can buy an information technology, but you can never buy an information system because that requires knowledge of the organization. So is it possible for an organization to have an efficient information system in the absence of IT? Well, probably not, because you know, even if you have a you know, even if you are a very small, for example, if you are a very small consultancy company and you have a fixed number of customers that you work for, um, and your work is very flexible and innovative. Um, you don't need that much information technology because you probably do most of, you know, you have probably daily meetings in which you meet and in which you discuss the problems. And that's 
low in information technology, but you still probably use WhatsApp to communicate and have PowerPoint presentations um, to help you make your point. Um, so it kind of, so there's probably never an absence of information technology. And, and again, you, even a clay tablet that they used in Babylon um, is strictly speaking an information technology. So um, it's, I don't think it's really possible without IT at all. You can be low in um, the technology you use in an organization. But it's a good question because most of the time when organizations think about, okay, how can we solve issues in our organization? How we can we solve issues with communication processes in organizations? Most of the time people intuitively think uh, we need some kind of technology to solve this because technology will solve everything. And if there's anything you learn in this study program in your bachelor and your pre-master and master, it's, it is that that's never the case. You know, technology doesn't solve anything and it can help contribute to a solution. Um, but most of the time managers think, oh, we need a new technology. And then the technology is implemented because people hope that it, some, that it kind of magically works in the organization. And that's a big reason that IT projects fail because people have, there's an official word for it that's called magic bullet expectations of technology. So if you just shoot technology in an organization, everything will miraculously fall into place. Um, and that's still a really common fallacy um, in organizations. Um, and, and that's something, you know, if, if you are able, um, well, if you want a very good paying career, um, if you are the person who knows something about information technology, but who also knows something about how people work and who also knows something about how organizations work, then you have a golden career ahead of you because then you can be the person who can advise organizations on how to best implement technology in organizations um, without only taking technology into account. Oh, okay. Um, so then we get back to, uh, uh, to this figure. Um, so um, as a final note, so I've helped you in the distinction between information system and information technology is, uh, is a bit uh, clear right now. Um, you can use this definition of information um, systems and you can use information systems as general in general to think about what happens if you implement new technology in an organization? So like I said a couple of slides before, implementing information technology in an organization is only there to make this happen. So it's only, only there you know, to make information flows, information flow more efficiently, effective and accurate to the organization. So that would be the role of technology in an organization. Um, it doesn't have to be immediately the case. Of course, you can, you can try out an information technology to see if it would function in the future. But this is basically the basic role of information technologies. And basically, what that means, that basically means that if you automate stuff, if you implement new technology, you try to um, shift um, work from the computer side to the, um, to the hardware and software side. So you try to shift work so that people and procedures have less to do um, and make less mistakes. Um, and the hardware, software, and data takes care, and the hardware, software takes care of the data. Um, however, if you want to do this in an organization, if you want to affect change, um, then this part, hard and software, is pretty easy to change. Um, but this part, procedures and people, changing how the organization works, is very difficult. So automation, um, implementing new technology in organizations, basically means you want to shift work from procedures and people 
to hard and software. But in order to do that, you will need to change not only hard and software, but also people and procedures. And that is more difficult than changing hard and software. So in a nutshell, that's an information system. Um, and that's the main difference between information systems and information technology. Um, innovations, of course, can be things other than an information technology. Um, but oftentimes, you can consider technological innovations to be similar to information systems. Because an innovation and technological innovation is not only the invention, it's everything surrounding the invention. So it's the people using the innovation. Uh, or the invention, making it a success and making it an innovation. Um, so knowing something about technology and information systems is not only important for just because it's important um, if you start working in your organization, but also if you want to learn something more about innovation. Then you basically see that, I forgot the, uh, the reference um, that it's from, but if you just focus on a bunch of hardware related stuff of technology that doesn't, as an organization, it doesn't increase performance at all. But if you focus on information systems, if you focus on people procedures and then think about technology, then it affects your performance as an organization. Okay, enough. Um, next. Um, I want to tell you a bit about the most important uh, information systems in an organization. And there are, you know, there are thousands of systems in an organization. So in your business plan, um, don't simply say, okay, we need a management system or something like that, but explain the type of system. So for example, for your innovation, it's very important that, um, um, that there is a link between the customers and the organization, then explain that. So explain, um, we want a system in which we can keep track of the customers we have. Um, because that's more useful than saying, oh, we need a customer uh, system. So explain the contents of the system rather than a general uh, description. Um, Oh yes, organizations can have thousands of information systems. So I am currently using um, Zoom. I am using uh, PowerPoint and Office. I am having a WhatsApp conversation, or well, not at the moment, but I email. Um, we have a new um, uh, system to do thesis, um, uh, thesis-related stuff. We have Canvas. I have um, a system in which I have to um, um, indicate the days I take off. We have a financial system. Uh, I use uh, statistical software. Um, uh, we have uh, Surf Drive and Dropbox. Um, well, if I think of, about it for um, a few more minutes, I can come up with probably a dozen more. So yes, organization, large organization have hundreds of information systems. But actually, it's a very good question because what many organizations try is to reduce the number of information systems. So um, many organizations would like to have only one. Um, why? We all see that, well, one is exaggerated, but like to have as few as possible. Um, and that's why you see that more and more you see those integrated information systems and you see one information system that an organization can use for lots of different purposes. Um, for your business plan, focus on the one or two systems that are most important for the innovation. Because of course your organization will need some kind of system to keep track of who works in your organization. Uh, of course your organization would need a system um, for uh, sick leave and holiday, the holidays of your employees. Um, but those are not relevant for the innovation. So focus on the one or two systems that are most important um, for your innovation, and that's don't discuss everything, um, because you would only you know you would you could write the ten business plans with only the information systems in your organization. Um, 
But Dima, we get back to your question uh, in a moment because um, uh, there's a very good point to make about multiple versus one information system, or fewer information systems in an organization. Um, but let me first, and then we have a short break, and but let me first finish um, how you can classify information systems. Um, because that I think is pretty um, useful as well to kind of see which information systems are important for your business plan, uh, which are important in organizations in general. So basically information system can perform several functions. So you have information systems that are operational, so that are truly needed to make your organization, um, so, so to make things in the organization happen you know, to uh, payroll, the administrative systems that take care of your employees, um, uh, systems that take care of the, the primary process in your organization, you know, manufacturing systems, um, those kinds of information systems. So that's one. Um, you have monitoring systems. So those are usually used by managers and supervisors. So um, checking how everyone is doing um, uh, our uh, OSIRIS in which we keep track of track of how you, you are doing and your grades and the courses you took. Um, it's a monitoring system, uh, but also an operational system, by the way. Um, and forecasting, we can use those systems to make predictions. But that's related to decision support. So decision support is basically monitoring, but then doing something more with it. So that's also used by managers. Um, so you have systems that help you make decisions so that way off different um, that weigh off information and um, help you in making a decision. So for example, um, customer relationship management systems in which you keep track of your customers can help you decide which customers are worth investing in. So they help you make decisions about, okay, you should send an email to this customer now, you should call this customer and you should get rid of this customer. Um, and you, but you have other systems as well. You have also have strategic systems that help you make strategic decisions. So those are all decision support systems. But finally, of course, you have communication systems like Zoom. Um, so email is a messaging group where workflow um, um, supply chain management to communicate across organizations. Um, and for your business plan, you don't need to explain the company from which you acquire the information system. You can say SAP um, if, you, uh, if you want, um, or, or another one. Um, but it's more important that you explain uh, the information system in terms of the information uh, flows. Um, so like we discussed in the lecture about strategy. Um, so, talk about the information system in terms of information flow. So talk about it. So, okay, we need information about our customer. Uh, therefore, we want a system that takes into account uh, this and this and this information. And if you have a specific vendor, so if you say, okay, we want to use Microsoft Dynamics or Salesforce um, for that uh, system, that, 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 that would be fine. That would be even, even better, but that's not necessary. So you don't have to dive into the specific vendors of information systems. But it's not that useful. Of, uh, are there also ISs that include all of the classifications? Um, yes. So, well, partly. So if you think of, so for example, Office 365, um, and if you think about Microsoft in general, they are working towards integrating um, most of their different products um, into one. So Office 356, uh, 365, um, includes, um, of course, Office, but it also includes OneDrive, it includes Microsoft Teams. Um, and I think we are one step away from a full integration with Microsoft Dynamics and uh, the database system uh, uh, that Microsoft has. Um, so I think they try to consolidate um, most of their products into one uh, yeah, giant suite um, that they can now and, and then they can now sell parts of it or everything to it to organizations. Um, 
And as well, if you think about SAP, so SAP is a, a large German organization which um, supplies um, uh, enterprise systems to organization and those systems are huge. So they have many different components uh, ranging from, um, from um, customer management systems to um, uh, manufacturing systems are basically everything. Well, there's not a site in which you can find all the information systems that exist because the number of information systems that exist is um, infinite. Um, a WhatsApp group with your friends is an information system. Um, so um, it would be impossible to list all information systems that exist um, um, on one site. Um, uh, moreover, because many information systems in an organization are uh, bes bespoke, and bespoke means um, that an organization built the information system itself. Um, so, for example, um, we now have a new thesis management system in our university, but we build it ourselves as a university. So, it's so no other university has that system, um, and no one except us knows that the system exists. So it would be impossible to have a list of all the systems in place. Um, however, if you Google customer relationship management systems or uh, enterprise systems, um, then you can find lists of um, the most important information systems that, that you can buy as an organization. Let me do that for you. Enterprise systems. That's the Wikipedia. We have a list of enterprise systems somewhere. No. Well, okay, there are lists. Um, yeah, chapter two is probably very helpful. They, they mentioned a couple of, uh, of vendors. So if you think of, um, so we're getting there after the break, but um, SAP, that's um, an enterprise system that by far most of the organization, most of large organizations use. So I think close to 100% of um, top 500 companies anywhere in the world use SAP as their main enterprise system. Um, and next day, in two weeks, uh, we will have a guest lecture by Bjorn. He was a, uh, is a former student of us, um, and he works for SAP uh, as an SAP consultant. He will explain more about how SAP works. Did I miss? Um... Yeah, and yeah, so that would be very good indeed. So if you in your business plan uh, mention the type of system that you like to build yourself in order to conduct your business, yeah, that would be very good. If it's if it's not out there, you have to build it yourself. Um, and many times it's all organizations decide that um, uh, commercial software um, just isn't really tailored uh, that well to the organization, so they decide to. Um, um, build the software themselves. Yeah, uh, SAP is a bit bigger in Europe than uh, than the U um, um, than in the US, and Oracle is a bit bigger in the, in the US than in the USA. But still, many of the larger organizations in the USA also use SAP because you know many of the larger organizations in the USA are very international organizations uh, as well. Um, but um, Oracle is. Um, um, Oracle is a is a very good second uh, to SAP. But I think worldwide SAP is a bit, uh, bit well, it's bigger than uh, than Oracle. So we use it as well. So for example, our whole financial system uh, and our human resource management system um, is built upon um, uh, SAP uh, uh, software. But of course, you have more. You have SAP. You have Oracle. You have Microsoft Dynamics. You in for whatever, never I work they have a core I think. Sage, I know that one, but 
but you have a, you have a bunch of them. Um, I'm going to get back to this after uh, after the break, but let me first um, do this one, and then we have. Uh, uh, so I need to do two slides, and we have a short break, and I continue. Um, you can also order information systems by the spider scope, um, and that's also pretty important, I think, to realize. So you have minor information systems that are used, like within departments, they are work group systems. So an inventory of a hospital pharmacy or um, our department using Microsoft Excel to keep track of thesis students um, are um, information systems that are departmental and that only support a small part of the organization, that only support a small work group. You also have information systems that are enterprise wide. Now they are supported by the entire in enterprise. Um, those are systems like enterprise system, customer relationship management systems, um, enterprise in a great, I, I, I forgot what the abbreviation stands for, but um, uh, systems that um, uh, integrate different other information systems with organizations. Um, and finally, you of course also have an, um, systems that go across organizations. So many large organizations link their systems to their supplier systems. So, um, for example, Walmart does this. So I think I explained this in a lecture about strategy. But Walmart connects their Walmart forces their suppliers to connect to their system. So if something runs out of stock in Walmart stores, um, the supplier automatically gets sent a uh, gets sent a signal that okay, you need to restock this and this Walmart. Um, so there the information system works across organizations. So it connects organizations. Um, that's called inter-organizational software or um, supply chain management software. So the most important information systems in an organization, and that's where you get back to the one system in an organization or enterprise resource planning systems. Um, and that's, what SAP and Oracle and Microsoft do, uh, Microsoft Dynamics does, those are the huge systems that basically try to integrate most of the information that flows through an organization into one central system. Um, so ERP and CRM are the most important, by far the most important systems that in an organization and probably, well, probably, I can guarantee you that you will work with these systems when you uh, enter the workforce after your uh, studies. Maybe you also work with it now uh, in your current job. But I guarantee you these systems will become very important in your daily work uh, later on. But you have more, you have inter-organizational systems, like I said, supply chain management. Um, if you go higher up in an organization, you'll probably work with management information systems and business intelligence systems, which are decision support systems. Um, and of course, you will also work with knowledge management systems like the corporate Wikipedia uh, and with collaboration systems such as well, basically such as Zoom and email, Microsoft Teams, those kind of things. So those are the most common information systems in an organization. Um, so in the remainder of the lecture, I want to explain shortly what ERP systems and CRM systems are. Um, if we don't make it onto CRM systems, I'm going to um, uh, save CRM for when we discuss social media and organization because it also, I was kind of doubting to discuss it now or later on. Um, but first, uh, allow me to uh, have a very short break so I can use the restroom. Um, so we continue in, uh, in three minutes or so. So get yourself a cup of coffee and then we continue. Sure. <laughs>
Okay, I'm back. So, okay. Um, I am. Um, I was just talking to my uh, uh, girlfriend uh, during the break, and uh, she um, she works in uh, in health, um, and uh, she works with people uh, who uh, who live on their own but still need uh, uh, still need still need help uh, functioning, um, and and. Um, so last Friday, she, uh, she tried to make it happen that someone would receive uh, her medication. Um, but apparently, there is no system in place which connects all the different healthcare organizations in Amsterdam. Um, so there is no way to communicate who which needs what medication um, um, across different health services. So the only thing you can do it is by phone. And that makes a lot, and that results in a lot of error. So she just told me that because she uh, talked to a, uh, a shrink um, on Friday afternoon, and the shrink was supposed to um, 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 again call the GGZ, the health services department, to deliver medication to someone. Um, but because it all had to be by phone, um, they someone forgot, um, and then someone was without medication uh, for the entire weekend. Um, and that's simply because there is no central system in which you can enter, okay, um, we need medication for this person. And you can just uh, write a recipe from one organization to another. Uh, of course, you have that between doctors and, uh, and hospitals and the pharmacies, but you don't have that with other health services. Um, so that would be an example of an inter-organizational information system that would, that would make the information flow more accurate and more efficient throughout the organizations. Um, so that's an example. Um, so let me give you a short other example of a major ERP system implementation. I think you all know, I will do it quite quickly. Um, I think you all know Nestle. You know, Nestle is a very, very big organization. Now it's Swiss based, um, but it's all around the globe. Um, so they make a lot of different things, you know, Nespresso, uh, Nutella, and, uh, well, I, well, throughout the world, they make like tens of thousands of different products. Um, so it's a multinational, um, but you have a USA branch, uh, which has about eight or to 10 billion in uh, turnover each year. Um, and originally, so this, this case is, um, is, I think, already 15 years old or so, but again, there's not much information uh, that we receive from for-profit organizations um, here. Um, but it's an interesting case nonetheless. So Nestle USA used to consist of a lot of different divisions and sub-organizations that were all part of Nestle, but are all functioned largely independent. Um, so it's really uh, decentralized, um, all the different companies, you know, they know they work for Nestle, but still value their own organization and felt part of more, more of their own organization than felt part of Nestle. Um, and it was fine, but it was also pretty inefficient and redundant because many of those organizations needed to have the same products to make their own products. So they, they had the same suppliers. So for example, they um, um, it turned out that they, um, that they paid 29 different prices for vanilla extract um, to the same vendor because the vendor had separate contracts with all of the deficients and sub companies. Um, so it is very inefficient. Um, so what Nestle wanted to do is they wanted to integrate Nestle USA into one big corporation. And they wanted to do that by implementing an information system in the organization. So they had a project, they called it One Nestle, um, and they implemented SAP. Um, uh, so the, uh, the SAP and the, the software, the software vendor. Um, to implement an enterprise system throughout the organization. Um, so they wanted to implement one system that took care of purchasing, financial system, sales and distribution, accounting, um, and some other systems as well. So they wanted to, to, to have, um, well, basically to connect 
all the organizations together and to work with one system so they could would pay one price for vanilla. Um, and they not only wanted to implement a new system, but they also wanted to organize the way they did business. So they wanted to have more of a process view instead of a divisional view of the organization. So divisional view means every organization pretty autonomous. Um, divisional, um, so process view means, okay, we have, um, uh, so, um, we have an inventory department, we have a supply department, we have a manufacturing department, so like that. So when the SAP system should be uh, organized around these processes, so it should be once, so uh, part of the people would work in purchasing and they would use part of the system, etc. And they had a strict deadline for implementation. I think it was one and a half years or so. So it was a huge project. So it cost, so they estimated it would cost tens of millions of euros to uh, dollars, sorry, to implement. Um, but of course, doing something like that is very, very difficult. Um, and it turned out to be a huge failure. So in the end, it cost them like a couple of hundred of million dollars uh, and it completely failed. Um, because imagine how difficult this is. So first of all, practically, um, so every organization had their own information system um, and they had like 30 different databases in which they stored information about products. So vanilla um, extract in one um, organization, in one system would, for example, have the code one, two, three, four, five. Um, and in another information system, vanilla extract would have the code uh, A, B, 24 or something like that. Um, so, and, and then, and it would mean you have, you have thousands, maybe tens of thousands of different products. So tying all that together and finding out which product is which and which code is which in order to tie them all together, that only will take years to do. Um, so it's, it's very difficult. And that's on, that was only one, that was only one practical issue. The major issues they had was what they just, you know, they just had magic bullet expectations. They just thought, okay, we're going to implement the system and everyone will align. So once people use the system, everyone will feel part of Nestle and everyone will use the system and start working with it uh, automatically. Well, that does of course not happen. So we spend enough time talking about structure and culture and people in an organization for you to realize that this will not happen. Um, because people value their autonomy. People felt part of um, their own organization. They had no feeling of Nestle culture. Um, so there were gold organization culture issues in play. Um, so it turned out that it failed. So after two years, they quit. So they stopped the project entirely um, and they started all over again. Um, and then they first took into account the business requirements. So they first um, talked with all the deficiencies, asked what they wanted, um, came up with a formal definition and uh, redesigned the processes and only then implemented information systems. Um, but they also trained and educated and involved people um, uh, in the organization. So that it was not a top-down decision, but it was more of a bottom-up process. Um, and in the end, that worked. So in the end, they saved. They say they saved three hundred twenty-five million dollars annually. Um, and they, had, they can make more reliable uh, demand forecasts, um, and it led to supply chain improvement. Just you know, cheaper prices uh, they pay for certain products. Um, so in this case, kind of shows that okay, the, the the enterprise system is one aspect, but you need to take into account basically everything we learned in the past lectures. Okay, then, sorry, what is an ERP system? Well, let me start again by saying that, well, I, I, think, I, I think I explained most of this. Um, large organizations have like thousands of different smaller systems. So they, have, they need many systems across many different departments. And especially larger organizations have many different systems that they use to do one certain thing and across departments they they use separate systems for 
uh, for the same thing. Um, so for example, at the university, we have a um, thesis, uh, uh, we used to have a, a thesis system uh, for every department. So one would have a separate system, one would do it in Excel, and we now are going to have one central system throughout the university. Um, because what happens if you don't connect all these systems together? Well, it leads to a lot of inconsistent and duplicate data. So if we have two, if every department in the university has two thesis systems, what happens if you say, well, I already wrote a master thesis, um, um, can I have an exemption? Um, or what happens if you go to another university and say, well, okay, I already took these courses, can I have an exemption for these courses? So if the systems are not connected, um, it's very difficult to communicate that. Um, and that's why we have Osiris in order to connect um, all the universities in the Netherlands together. So if you have disconnected data, it leads to a lot of um, uh, disjointed processes to duplicate data. You don't integrate information. Um, it impedes innovation because um, if, um, if one department of the organization um, uh, comes up with something, they have no, it's, it's difficult to communicate to another part of the organization. And if you, if you have different systems to keep track of customers, it's difficult to integrate and maybe you miss certain key information. So in general, as an organization, you want to connect information to each other um, in order, to, um, um, in order to, to decrease expense and to be more effective and more efficient. And in order to do so, you can install, well, it's not install, implement an enterprise system or an enterprise resource planning system. And those are those big systems that organizations have in place. So for us as a university, um, OSIRIS is a main enterprise system all Dutch universities use to keep track of students, the courses they took, uh, they take, the grades they have, uh, and a lot of other functions. And that's an enterprise, well, actually, that's a cross enterprise system, but that's that's basically can be seen as an enterprise system. So, enterprise systems they consist of one single database, so one centralized database that in which all information, well, in which all data is stored. And then there are many different modules that surround the database for different parts and different divisions of the organization. Um, and each of them uses and taps into a specific part of the database. So like the figure here shows, um, um, financial and accounting information is stored in the central system and finance and accounting uses that to, um, for customer credit to calculate revenue, et cetera. Um, human resources uses the central database to keep track of hours work, uh, to keep track of labor costs, to keep track of job skills and employee improvements, uh, et cetera. Um, so basically it's usually one information system, usually from one single vendor, usually at least done in Europe, of course, SAP or, well, usually it's SAP, Oracle or Microsoft Dynamics. Um, and it provides company-wide data to support decision-making across many different departments and functions. So you have, um, so in current implementations of SAP and other software, um, it's, it's all gone to the cloud. Um, and you can also, you can outsource it so that the data is actually stored not in your organization, but on the service of SAP itself, depends on your implementation of the, of the software. Um, but in general, many of the interfaces nowadays are web-based. Um, so you have different web-based modules that different parts of your organization can have access to and that they can use for their work. So um, and you have, well, SAP has like dozens of different modules for different uh, parts of an organization. For example, finance, your research management, manufacturing, supply chain, um, customer relationship management, uh, sales force and after sales support. Um, and in the, the table below is, is I think, in a, a more or less exhaustive overview of everything that an enterprise system can support, which of course you don't have to learn by heart from the exam.
Um, so basically what an, what an enterprise system does, it looks at all the processes in an organization. So um, a process like this, um, but then way, way bigger. And it tries to implement the system in order to optimize and support the information that is needed to make the process happen. If you look at the simpler example that we discussed in the strategy lecture, um, then, so when you're basically, we discussed that um, if you look at a very simple information flow between parts of, a, uh, of an airline organization, um, then we discussed, okay, you need some information that flows from the check-in desk to the airline booking department, you need information that flows back. Um, and basically an enterprise resource planning system makes sure that all these information flows can happen and that they are all integrated in one system and that everyone can access the information they need when they need it. And that's basically what an enterprise resource planning system is. Um, in your business plan, don't write down, we use an enterprise resource planning system um, because that's not specific enough because as you, I've noticed by now an enterprise resource planning system is can be anything. Um, in your business plan, write down, okay, what specific part of the EFB we, do we need? So what information flows um, do we support with information technology? Because that's the information system. And you can say, okay, we are going to use certain parts of SAP or we're going to use, uh, we are going to use, um, customer relationship management software, um, and we are going to use an SAP or Microsoft Dynamics for that. That's fine, but be specific in what um, uh, specific processes you want to support with your information system. Okay. I forgot where I was, I was here. So you can say that Yes, that's very useful to have a separate CRM. So let me do that first. So I'll do the next. Uh, um, because customer relationship management systems are basically the second most used systems in an organization, especially if you have consumers as customers, but also if you have businesses as customers, it's almost equally as important. Um, so customer relationship management systems, those are systems in which you keep track of your customers. Um, and not only your current customers, but also your past customers, your potential customers, your leads, as it's called. Um, so, and there are also there are also separate companies who um, sell customer who specifically focus on customer relationship management software. So you have Salesforce, yeah, and, and you have Simple CRM, um, and you have many more. Um, of those uh, of those specific companies who make customer relationship management software, and basically, customer relationship management software is there to, you know, to to identify okay who could be your potential customers. Uh, it's there to find out okay um, who it's, it's there to do things like mailing. So okay, who should be called? Who should be sent an email um, in order to convince them to buy more? Um, it's also there to help after sales. Okay, who should we call? Who, who, had, who had just bought something recently? Who should we ask to leave a review? Um, so, um, and also things like uh, customer service software. Of course, you also have separate systems for that, but that can also be integrated into a customer relationship management software. Um, but what, when we talk about um, Social media. Um, I'm going to talk a bit more about customer relationship management software and social CRM. So I think it will really fit there. So let me um, spend the remaining part of the lecture to explain the advantages and disadvantages of ERP because I think that's most important to understand. Um, in the guest lecture, Bjorn will talk much more about the advantages and disadvantages of ERP um, and also about how to implement that. Well, he works for SAP. Um, so he knows. But you can immediately see when you look at an enterprise uh, system that it has advantages because it, it kind of 
Um, it standardizes processes. It integrates information into one database. So you get a uniform organization um, in, in which differences you would normally have in information, et cetera, are integrated. And you can leverage scale. Um, and leverage scale means, OK, so for example, the Nestle case, so every organization used to have its own, own, own contract with suppliers. You can now say to your suppliers, OK, we want to do an order of this magnitude. So you can leverage the scale of your entire organization. Um, it's also useful because you can have a lot of outside connections. So because as many organizations use SAP, it becomes increasingly easy to, to connect different organizations to each other. So if your suppliers also use SAP, and if your customers also use SAP, if you're a business-to-business -business communication, it suddenly becomes much easier to integrate um, your systems with those of um, your, uh, um, with those of other organizations. So information is available um, uh, at all times across departments. Um, that means that managers can use it to make decisions so they can use the centralized database to make decisions so they don't have to wait for reports coming in from across the organization anymore. Um, and also important, um, it is kind of a standard best way of doing business. So when you um, buy um, SAP, so when you buy an enterprise resource planning software, it's, it's not that you it's not that you can just click and run install. No, you get a bunch of consultants who look at your organization and who implement the system um, in a certain way. And they, they have done that like a zillion times before in other organizations, and they know what basically the best way of doing um, uh, business is. They know how to optimize processes. So you don't not only buy the software, you also buy um, best practices, you buy a way of doing business. Um, yeah, so when you use different systems, so when you use um, uh, ERP for uh, SAP for an enterprise system, uh, when you use CRM, uh, Salesforce or CRM, it is more difficult to integrate. And that's a problem that many organizations have. They have many information systems and it is difficult to integrate that information. Um, but it's a bit technical, you don't have to remember that for the exam, but um, there, is, there, are, um, uh, there are standards for um, um, integrating information, communicating information across systems, that's called um, uh, electronic data integration, for example, EDI, I think. Well, it's called EDI, but I forgot what it stands for, I think electronic data integration. Um, and that's a standard to communicate information across different systems. And of course, nowadays we have um, uh, we have XML, um, and XML is also um, a standard way of communicating data across different systems. Yes, <laughs> um, I would very much like to know this case of, um, uh, of a liquor company in Amsterdam because you see that a lot. So especially when organizations grow, you see that they have, okay, we need a CRM system, okay, we need a financial system. And then suddenly they become big so quickly um, and they have separate systems and then comes a new phase when they have to try to integrate that. Um, and that's what you see in larger organizations as well. So they, um, so, so when you start, you know, of course, when you buy other companies, which is basically similar to Nestle, and when you try to integrate system, it's it's really difficult. Um, no, um, um, in our master, uh, we don't have a follow up course on this specifically. Uh, there are courses in um, organization science, so in uh, in Tyson, um, which offer this. Um, so they have courses on enterprise integration and enterprise resource planning. Um, in which you learn more about SAP, uh, but in generally more about optimizing business processes with, uh, with enterprise systems. So if you're interested in that, I would certainly advise you to take a course like that. Um, 
But remember, uh, remember this. So when Bjorn gives his um, his guest lecture, uh, be sure to ask him how how he did it, um, because after his studies, he immediately went to apply for an internship uh, or no a traineeship uh, with SAP, and that's where he learned um, to do that to do this. Um, but also they they very much like not only to have more technical students, but also to have more students like us, the psychology students at SAP, because we um, um, we know more about people. Um, so, so we know how to convince people to use the system. Uh, we can talk to people um, and talk to them about how they would like to use the system and what information they need. Um, so we as communication and information science students are actually also, I think, pretty useful for companies like SAP um, uh, for them to, to help uh, organization with implementing enterprise systems. Okay. Let me do, sorry about taking a bit more of your time. Uh, let me short, I want to finish with also explaining the disadvantages of um, ERP. Um, so they have a lot of advantages, but the success rate is very low. Um, and that's because what I said in the beginning, you have to take into account the organization as a whole, the people, the culture, and not only the technology. And you see that many times organizations focus on the technology alone. So they think implementing technology, everything will work, but that doesn't happen. So you have to think about everything in your organization in order for an um, enterprise system to be a success. Um, it's also very expensive, you know, you pay a couple of million a year to SAP to only to maintain the system. And then you have, you have consultancy costs, you have license fees, you have to maintain staff to keep track of, to, to uh, make sure that your system works in your organization. Um, if you update to a new system, you have change over costs. So it, it costs millions and millions a year. Um, and it also has disadvantages because, you know, I said an advantage is that there is a standard way of doing business. But if you implement a system with a standard way of doing business, you learn, you lose your competitive edge because every organization is doing business the same way as you do it. And, and you, you lose the way you do business. So if you are a very flexible company um, with a lot of outside connections and you rely on uh, quick communication and on creativity, then an ERP system is probably not for you. Well, maybe for parts of your organization, but not for the entirety of your organization. Um, so basically, if everyone is using SAP in the same way, how do you gain a competitive advantage of other, other organizations? And that's a real disadvantage. So in your business plan, you don't have to take into account the costs, but you do have to take into account um, possible disadvantages. So um, um, if you have just explained that your organization um, in your business plan is a very flexible, very small organization with only 10 people who work together face to face on a daily basis, and then in the next paragraph, you say, okay, we're going to need a huge implementation of SAP, then those two do not connect at all. Um, because so, you, so that would not be the best system for your organization. So you have to take into account the interplay between the organization and the, um, uh, the systems you want to use. Um, and that's how you come up with the disadvantage and the advantage of a system like that for your organization. Okay, that's it. I'm going to do the, um, the um, explain a bit more about CRM systems um, uh, in a couple of uh, in a couple of weeks. But this really is the core of information systems, and enterprise systems are the most important information systems in organizations. Um, so I hope this was useful. I I I, I know uh, usually from the reactions I get face to face that many people, um, you know, they kind of drift off when you talk about technology and information systems. Uh, but take my word of it for it. When you enter the workforce, this suddenly will all fall into place. 
um, and will become very relevant for your work. Um, so that's it for now. Um, so I'm going to have some breakfast and then at 11 o'clock, um, I will continue the, uh, with the um, uh, supplement about hardware and software. Um, so you're uh, welcome to tag along, but you don't have to. So for now, thank you very much. Uh, next week will be a technical lecture about databases and database design. Um, yeah, the, it's, it's via the same Zoom link in a couple of moments. So I'll see you next week or I'll see you, uh, well, I won't see you at all, but maybe you'll, uh, you'll uh, tag along. So thank you very much for now.